the sower soweth the word. In Isaiah um, chapter 32, verse 20, it says, Blessed are ye that sow beside all waters. Whatever difficult circumstances that you got going on in your life, whatever, they may be um, disagreeable, they may be offensive, we're in places that you may go, but nevertheless, you are sowing the word of God because it says that here that this sower sows at a venture. They take a chance. They take a risk. They're exposed to danger or possible loss. You know, and, and as I begin to study this, this reminds me once I was working at a store and there were, there were two, two guys that came up and jumped on this, this one guy. And, and, and I heard the devil says, when I looked out there, says, we're going to kill him today. And, and, and I told my coworker, I says, call 911, you're not doing it fast enough. Well, you know, the, the Holy Spirit, God had to take control of me. Because see, here's this risk and this chance or maybe this possible loss that I had taken, but God had my back. And I don't recommend you do this unless you know that God's got your back and God is speaking to you and, and he allows you to do this because this is the only way that I could have done that. Well, I just really walked out there and I began to tell the guys to, to, to get off of him, to just stop because surely they were going to kill him. Two, two, two big guys on a little guy, just throwing, picking them up, throwing them down against the concrete and, and, and just really literally, you know, um, beating them up. But nevertheless, you, you know, as I sit there and, and I watch that, he had a, a friend that was parked on the side of the building that did not even uh, that, to come and help him. And the pumps, they, they, they were just really loaded. He probably had about 15 people outside. But nevertheless, sowing that seed beside all waters at a, at a venture, at a risk, at a danger, because there are people out there and they do need our help, but we have to stay in the anointing and under, under God's mighty hand to be able to go forth and do the work that God wants us to be, because he must go to do good as one calls. And we have an example here in Acts uh, chapter 16, verse 9, as one calls. What they were saying is, come over, Jesus, come over and help us. We need your help. You know, just as the boy was calling, he was, he, 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 he was really crying out. I mean, what I could see, he needed help. And Christ was saying, go over and help. Nobody's going to help. Go over and help. So I truly thank God for the power of God. And what God began to, to reveal to me that day and make me know is that he said that he's given us power power to tread on scorpions and serpents and nothing by any means shall hurt you so you've got to believe and stand on the mighty hand of god that god would be able to use you to know that you've got power to tread on scorpions and serpents because jesus had power the disciples had power the father gave jesus power the disciples power he'll give you power i thank god for the power that he's given me and even, yea, though you walk through the valley of the shadows of death, even though I walk through them, I will fear no evil because he is my rod and thy staff he is with me. Nevertheless, the disciples, they followed him. They stayed close to him. And this is what God is saying. He's saying, stay, stay close to me because they and only they will be found the true disciples of Christ who are willing to go to the sea. I'm going to the sea with him. I don't have, I can't go back. There's nothing to go back to. So I don't have a choice. And then again, I do have a choice, but it's my desire to go to the sea with him, to follow him into dangers and to difficulties because that is what one will be doing if you're going to be a sore. Many of us would be content to go the land way to heaven. <laughs> you don't want no problems in your life. You want to take the easy way out. But those that would rest with Christ now and hereafter, they must follow him wherever he leads them. If it be on a ship or into a prison or as well into a palace. See, here we have the peril and perplexity of, of disciples on this voyage, their journey by the sea. The peril, they being exposed to dangerous and hazardous conditions.